I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire. The ring of fire. Pick it, brother. I've long resisted the do-it-yourself alcohol stove virus, uh, but a chance circumstance recently caused me to become infected. Uh, DP over at dphammockgear.com sent me a stove of his to review. That's the so-called ultimate stove. It has a piece of a stand and a couple of stakes that will support a pot and a burner. Uh, the stove is designed to burn three fuels, uh, alcohol in the burner this way, a Nesbitt tablet when the burner is turned over, Nesbitt tablet is set on top, um, or wood when you don't use this burner um, at all. So um, as I started doing some experiments, I noticed that in doing an alcohol burn with this burner, just put some alcohol in there, uh, light it on fire, let it blossom, and then put the top on. Uh, had the property that the flames came shooting up the side. It looked to me like there was a fair amount of lost heat there. And indeed, doing a bit of research into this, I found that this style of stove is recommended by the Cognoscente to use a much wider pot than this one. And this is a Snow Peak uh, 600 or even a Snow Peak 450, for example. And so uh, what I thought was needed, and I told DP so, was a, a different burner uh, that uh, one didn't come out the sides like that and uh, arguably ought to be uh, narrower, but of course the requirements would be that it be the same height as this so you don't have to redesign this stand and that it could be turned over and have Esbit tablets burned on top as well. So that's what brought me back into the do-it-yourself uh, stove world and off we go. Even before I got involved with DP stove, um, I was fascinated by the use of a material called carbon felt in alcohol stoves. This is a piece of it, has a remarkable property that it absorbs alcohol and the burning point of the carbon fiber is a lot higher than the burning point of alcohol. So you can saturate a piece of this and light it on fire. Then the vapors that are at the surface of it will burn, causing the flames that will heat a pot. And then the burning at the surface uh, will heat the alcohol that's uh, saturated inside, causing it to vaporize and be burned and so on. The earliest reference I can find, anyone using this material on a stove, uh, is in a dialogue between Skidster and Stealth on White Blaze back in 2007. Skidster had been using it, uh, was interested. Uh, Zelf got interested, did some testing of his own, decided against it because it doesn't wick alcohol anywhere nearly as well as uh, fiberglass. Uh, Tinny, on the other hand, is putting felt in some of his stoves to uh, hold the alcohol and keep it from spilling if the stove spills and is also using it as a burner head. And then other stove designs came out to use it as a wick itself. And so those designs would roll some up and stick it someplace and have alcohol provided to that and set it on fire. And uh, this was used a lot in stoves where you have a burner head and a separate bottle of alcohol. And that was all uh, pretty interesting as well. And then Naughty over at Hammock Forums uh, figured to use a piece of this and roll it up and soak it with alcohol and put it inside of uh, something called a bush cooker, which is a wood burning stove. And I uh, use alcohol to heat water inside of that. And that was uh, actually fiendishly clever, so clever that the manufacturer of that stove now sells that as an accessory. So I was interested in this carbon felt stuff and had the, uh, the notion that somehow carbon felt might help with the particular problem that I was interested in. Following the lead of others, I found carbon felt cloth at Lowe's, something that's called uh, Oatly Flame Protector, sometimes called plumber's cloth. Um, so it comes in a 9 inch by 12 inch uh, square, costs about $15. And uh, once I had some of that material, then I was uh, free to use it and play with it. One of the things that I discovered uh, in playing with it was that once you saturate a piece of the felt and burn it, then you get good flames um, until it transitions to the end of the burn phase, at which point the flames don't reach the pot anymore and you just burn off the residual alcohol that's in the felt. Which means that the more felt you use, the more uh, alcohol is trapped as residual and not burned and, and heats the pot. And so that argues for using less felt rather than more felt. But then to hold alcohol, you need to have more felt. So there's sort of a balancing act here to put in just as much felt as you need to hold the alcohol that you expect to use and then burn that. There are a lot of ingenious stove designs out there, and the stove that uh, 
I've come up with uh, should be properly viewed as just a sort of a tweak on a lot of other great ideas. That said, uh, there are a number of things that I would like my stove to have. So one thing I'd like is for it to be uh, small and light enough so that I can pop it in my bush buddy uh, in the morning to cook up my cu cup of tea. So it needs to be small and uh, have a small diameter as it will need for uh, this stove as well. Uh, I'd like it to be a fuel miser. Uh, I don't want to have to carry any more alcohol than I have to. And uh, just as a matter of principle, I would like it not to use very much stuff. Um, I'd like to be able to cap the stove like you can with a Trangia. Uh, so once you've burned uh, what you want, then you can uh, save the alcohol that's inside. And this would help, I think, uh, with this residual burn issue um, of, uh, of carbon felt. And so leave some uh, alcohol in the, in the felt to be uh, burned again uh, another time. Um, I would, uh, of course, like to flip the stove over, we saw, and burn an Esbit tablet on top of it. Um, I'd like the stove itself to be uh, light and small. And uh, I'd like to build it myself. Why? Well, just because, you know, I've got the do-it-yourself bug. So, what's the great idea? Drum roll, please. Nothing very fancy at all. Use this shape, only with a smaller diameter. Something that suggests itself is a V8 can. So, version one was to cut a V8 can to be the same height as that burner, and then cut a strip of carbon felt that fit on the inside of that V8 can, tuck it in, put in some alcohol and burn. And you know what? It worked. It worked actually pretty well. Uh, this can, however, is not particularly sturdy. It was uh, good for version one, uh, but I thought for version two, I would like something that was less prone to bend. So being on a V8 can kick, then I started toying around with how does one go about mating pieces of V8 cans, not just toying around, but uh, looking on the internet to see how people have done it. And so ended up uh, after versions two, three, four, five, and six, and who knows how many else, uh, a version where I've got the top with uh, the top cut out, uh, the bottom, because I like this nice uh, concave shape on the inside for uh, having the alcohol go to the edge where it can be soaked up uh, by the carbon felt. There's felt on the inside. And uh, this works well as well. Uh, only challenge is mating uh, the top part of this can with the bottom part of this can. Uh, that's tricky and uh, labor intensive and not something that you'd want to do if you were uh, building a lot of these stoves uh, for uh, commercial use. So then I went to the internet, our friend, to see if it was possible to get commercial cans that were of the right size uh, and height. And the answer of that is yes. There's a car crowd that's called SpecialtyBottles.com and they have just the thing that I need. It is just exactly the right height. It is the same diameter, in fact, just a little bit smaller than the V8 cans and this piece of felt can fit inside like so. Not only that, it comes with a cap. And so the cap can go on um, when you have a burn and snuff out the fire. So this turns out to be the stove of choice. And uh, now we can take it through its paces and uh, report on its performance. Going to get going with the test burn now. We'll start off with two cups of water, initially at 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we're going to be putting in two-thirds of an ounce of heat uh, into um, our tin here. And uh, then we will have this temperature monitor on throughout the run and uh, see how temperature increases as a function of time and then when it hits boiling. Pour two-thirds of an ounce of fluid into the tin and notice that it is absorbed almost immediately uh, by the felt. Probably not needed, but swirl it around a bit to get whatever's on the bottom up into the felt, and then let it go. fire I went down 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 and the flames went higher and it burns 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 the ring of fire the ring of fire hear the water boiling can see the steam This graph shows the result of several experiments 
each of which took two cups of 64 degree water and put it in a Snow Peak 600 and tried to boil it using a variety of different stoves and amounts of alcohol. Uh, the first thing to look at is the performance of the stove that DP included in his original uh, ultimate uh, stove. It was a Super Cat. We put in two-thirds of an ounce of alcohol, set it alight, and it flamed out at uh, four and a half minutes and did not achieve a boil. only got to 150 degrees. As another baseline, took the uh, little tin that I'm interested in, uh, put two-thirds of an uh, ounce of fuel in it, did not have the felt strip in, and let it a fire and what happened there was it burned out at six and a half minutes and it too did not achieve a boil. Put in the felt though but the same amount of fuel and uh, you get quite a different answer. What happens there is we have a boil at twelve and a half minutes and it burns out uh, four minutes later at sixteen and a half minutes. So this is uh, quite a quite a distinct difference. The felt is really slowing down the burn allowing the a pot to absorb the energy that's coming up and come to a boil. So uh, it's significant. The next thing I wondered is whether the amount of fuel that was put into the tin would affect the burn time and burn rate, and indeed it did. Uh, putting one ounce in caused a boil in 10 minutes. Of course it went on quite a long, longer, another 11 minutes. But the difference between a 10 minute boil and a 12 and a half minute boil is quite significant. And I think what's happening there is that the felt is really saturated. In fact, um, it's, it's saturated and there's a puddle that's at the bottom of the tin. So uh, it burns hotter and faster and uh, we come to a boil faster as well. But then the thing I was really interested in is whether I could get a boil with only half an ounce of fuel and there the answer was yes provided that you do it in my garage anyway. We had a boil at 13 and a half minutes and it went on to burn for another minute uh, beyond that. The last question that I wanted to have uh, investigate was uh, whether the diameter of the uh, tin used uh, affected the burn. And so I put felt in in the bottom of a fancy feast can and I uh, put in two-thirds of an ounce of fuel and uh, what we had was a flame out at eight and a half minutes. This too did not achieve a burn. So this is a significant difference. You wouldn't think looking at the diameters of these two tins that there was so much difference but uh, the behavior on burning two-thirds of an ounce of fuel was very different. So that's a mystery to me. I haven't sorted that one out yet. Uh, maybe the uh, stove smarties uh, can do that. The takeaway message here is that uh, this little tin with the felt in it uh, is a slow but a very efficient stove. Uh, this data indicates that, you know, if all you need to do is boil 16 uh, ounces of water, uh, you can do it, uh, at least in ideal conditions, uh, using well under uh, two-thirds of an ounce of fluid, uh, and that's going to minimize the amount of stuff that you have to carry along with you when you pack. Weight-wise, this unit uh, weighs 16 grams. Uh, the V8 version of it weighs um, 8 grams, um, if that matters to you. What matters to me, at least if I were selling things, is that I can buy these cans right here for 50 cents and the amount of felt that I've used in here doesn't cost more than 50 cents for the size of the strip. So for a uh, dollar or so, uh, you can include this uh, in a stove kit. So it's really very economical. So I got into this game uh, to uh, see if I could find a replacement for the uh, DP's uh, ultimate stove. Um, I think I have. Whether or not DP takes advantage of this research is his call. Uh, but uh, I've certainly found a stove that I like and that I will be carrying. And uh, dang it, I got bit by this do-it-yourself alcohol stove bug. And uh, I haven't shaken it, so I think there's probably some more tinkering in my future. Sure had a lot of fun this time. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire. Ring of fire.